Welcome to VNA Health Highlights, a program of the Visiting Nurse Association of Cape Cod. On today's program, we're going to learn a little bit more about music therapy, especially as it applies to our VNA hospice program. And we're lucky enough to have with us today a certified music therapist, and her, this is Joy in Domenico. Hi there. Great, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. I'm glad to be on the show today. So, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you come to be doing something like this, be certified music therapist, or you must have had a early days interest in music growing up. Sure, sure. I am a, a music therapist in private practice and have been um, working in the music therapy field for over 30 years. That's a long so time. It is a long time and it's been building up. I've, I've played the accordion since I was five years old. Really? And uh, I went to college at a campus that had a school for special kids. And um, I used to volunteer there with my gu classical guitar and I used to sing little songs to them and play music, just soft, gentle music. And I realized that music can really change behaviors. And it can calm children down, especially if they're having a tantrum or having a really bad day. So that was the beginning of my looking at the field as a career. So did you study it, was it part of a college curriculum or do you were something else? I studied else special education. Oh, perfect. And I studied child development. Okay. And I actually went to England for my few first music therapy courses and realized that um, music therapy had been around in Europe for many more years really? than here in the United States. So How long has it been around here? Uh, it's know? been around in the United States since the 1950s, uh, mostly working with uh, veterans that had come back from the war and had post-traumatic stress disorder. And they were wow. teaching actually teaching music in the hospitals so that they would be able to refocus their pain and refocus some of their terrible memories and actually begin to build their lives with that kind of discipline. Wow. So the certification as a music therapist then came Cer after. Certification came much after that. Um, I have, uh, there is a board for certified music therapists um, to become a music therapist, you have to study at an approved college um, where curriculum includes the core courses in, in music therapy, instrumental voice and conducting competencies, and the psychology of music, the acoustics of sound, wow. six months of an approved internship working with all types of various disabilities and uh, seeing you know, what you may become interested in. There's pediatric music therapy, there's neurological rehabilitation music therapy, there's music therapy just for hospice work and palliative oh, okay. care. So there's so many areas of um, rehabilitation and so many areas of, of the health related fields that music therapy touches. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. Yeah, so you personally, obviously play the harp. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, and then you had mentioned Started on the accordion. I started on the accordion, and then when I was guitar, in high school, said? I played guitar. Yeah, and I played clarinet and violin, and I'm so, learning Irish fiddle. Oh, really? Now, fun. and that's a f very fun instrument. Yeah, and I'm also in the uh, community chorus, uh, the community orchestra of Cape Cod. Wow. Yeah. So, were you from a music family? Yeah, my father is a is a jazz trumpet player. Well, there you go. So and, you had, uh, so there's definitely you had no musical choice. genes it was in, your genes, in right? our family. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So music therapy then, you had touched on it a little bit, um, has the hospice piece of it, is that the, the newer side of the use of music therapy? I know you had mentioned the post-war, uh, the 50s is where it hospice, began here. The hospice, it, hospice and music therapy has been around a long time. Has it? And mostly you find so much in the western United States and the Midwest. Uh, oh, is that it right? It takes a while to come back to New England. Really? Um, it starts in the west of California, gets it going, and I then guess it drifts its way in, over. In many ways, yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Um, so many as, things. As the Association of Music Therapy Association has its definition of music therapy. And that definition is music therapy is an established healthcare profession that uses music to address physical, emotional, cognitive, and social needs of an individual. 
and music therapy interventions can be designed to promote wellness, manage stress, alleviate pain, express feelings, enhance memory, improve communication, and promote physical rehab for all ages. Now, is your personal experience, you've seen all of those things? I've seen all of those things, yeah. right? From the cradle uh, really? to the dying patient. Wow. Yes, I have. So you've practiced your talents on all age groups? Yes, I have. And do you still, or are you now as your focus lean a little bit more toward hospice? In, in private practice, I, I take very specialized cases. Okay. I take, uh, so I can spend a lot of time with my out of the box uh, solutions and interventions. You must have to meet and understand right. the situation before you design a program Absolutely. or choose the music or it, the, even the instrument. It starts with an assessment okay. and an, an evaluation and then it, you come up with an individualized and unique um, treatment plan and then you work on certain goals and objectives and then you have recommendations as to how to integrate that person back into a school classroom or how to integrate that person in, back into their family life if they're living in a group home or if they're, you know, with, with um, hospice and palliative care, it's a whole other set of interventions that you have yeah. because you're working with families and caregivers. You're working with patients who don't have a lot of time to right. for reach the goals and objectives that we see as important. Right. So it, it also taps on into the dying process and how comfortable that can be. And you can help it's with an that. uncomfortable kind yes, of thing that yes. people don't want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So you pr you provide a benefit, I would think, to not only the patient but the patient's family as well, right? Absolutely. It's sort of a halo effect of. Right. Right. Do you mind if I sit in the room while we <coughs> do this? Is that right? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And is it always the harp that you use in hospice? I've used harp, classical guitar, and I've also used accordion. Wow. So. Is it? by your design, depending on who the person is or what their situation is, or are they familiar? You have a discussion and they yeah, are familiar usually, with? Yeah, usually I have a discussion with the patient and uh, f to talk about musical preferences. Oh, yeah. They might, uh, after I'm working with them uh, for a day or two, they might say, do you know this song? Or, you know, my mom used to sing it to me when my father oh, played the yeah. accordion. Or wow. they may have some reminiscent or some something that connects them to a different sort of instrument. So I'll I'll bring it along. Oh yeah. I remember one patient I was seeing. I was playing the harp, and the husband of the patient came out and started playing the violin with me. <laughs> nice. So it became like a, a duet. A duet. Sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Wow. So let's talk about that a little bit of. Um, specifically for a hospice program, for our hospice program. Mm -hmm. How does it all start? So you would have a call from a nurse or the social worker saying, wow, I think this person would be a good candidate? Or Yes, the, the nurse or the social worker would, who's working on the case would refer a patient to me. And they would see that, uh, ask me if I could, you know, um, call the family and make an, make an initial appointment to go see this person. That's how it kind of all begins. Okay. Um, On that initial assessment, do you show up with an instrument or? I always do, just, just in, case, in case. Because okay. in hospice, uh, that initial assessment may be the last time that I see the person. The timing, as you so mentioned. So you just right. never know. Right. Uh, we particularly try to address patient symptoms when there is a referral for music therapy and music therapy is used to provide symptom management in patients experiencing anxiety or agitation. Which uh, is probably most. Uh, well, most, especially if we're working with Alzheimer's patients okay. or we're working with actively dying patients, you might find that there's more agitation, more anxiety. And you know, you want to do as much as you can to make the patient comfortable mm -hmm. and to make the caregivers also feel comfortable with the situation. So um, music, music therapy sessions and just the playing of the harp because it's a string instrument and produces vibrations. Um, playing the harp can manage stress. Listening to the harp can 
can help to manage someone's stress. It could decrease um, blood pressure readings. It could uh, turn labored breathing into a more comfortable type of, of rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just helps in so many ways. When the caregiver sees the patient relax, they begin to relax too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it has a domino effect or that yes. effect of dropping a pebble into the water and you see the, the ripples. ripples. Yeah. 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 So does the patient participate? In Sometimes they Sometimes. do. Sometimes the patients are able to, when I first meet them, uh, they're more communicative. Um, uh, sometimes I'll ask the patient if they'd like to try and listen to a string and, and they, they might go like this. Oh, that's a pretty sound, yes. you know? Yes. Or, or they might, they'll say, wow, that's very pretty. And they, they might reach out, you know. And these are, these are some are patients that haven't talked in a long time. Is that right? Yeah, so that uh, the music becomes a medium for them to communicate, breaks through, breaks yeah. through right. And, and that's really a, a pleasure to see people maybe who, who have Alzheimer's disease that the dementia and the hallucinations just put them in another world and then when they hear the music and experience the music, they're actually present to that moment, which, which is enlightening. Yes. And the families just, they're so pleased when they see that. Yeah. They're so surprised Are they? and pleased and invite me to come back again as often <laughs> as I can. Yeah. Because it, it works. Music therapy works. Yes. And it, it makes a difference in people's lives. So what do you notice um, in the patient once, so we have our assessment visit, you have a discussion about, you learn a little bit about their history, if they had right. certain types well, of music they like or instruments or whatever, and then you, you sit and play for? Anywhere between 40 minutes to an hour. Wow, that's a long time. It's a long time, but it goes by fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what we see, what I see, um, is that the patients connect to the music. You know, they're not, they're not just agitated and, you know, uh, talking to someone who's not there or they're not, they're not picking at their skin or at their clothes. They, I d definitely see the evidence um, that they're relaxing. They're beginning to relax. When I play something like... Yeah, go ahead. I might hear somebody all of a sudden humming. Oh. And it's not the caregiver, it's the patient. Yeah. So you say, oh, wow, you know, th did I just hear a hum? And I continue to play. And then I might try a another song after that. And um, uh, is it familiar us, songs it, or more? It may be familiar to the patient, right? You get to them a little more with mm -hmm. something that they know at this time in their lives. Yeah, yeah. right. For the for it enhances their memory um, as the disease progresses and it's degenerative, as we know. Then eventually, no words come back, and because of the the brain is deteriorating so much that when people are in the actively dying process. I go with just vibrations so that they don't, they're not um, having to remember words, they're not grasping and groping for memory. Oh, so when you say memory. just vibrations, that you wouldn't be targeting a song that would have lyrics that... Right. Can it would be more, much more peaceful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can see where it would have a. It just just has a calming. melting effect, and it just they don't have to think about words. They don't have to think about not knowing the words because when they forget the words of a song, they get anxious. It adds a little stress. Like they that should we say, I should know this, right? Yeah. So as the patient, you know, um, becomes uh, more weakened by the condition, they have to change the music to, you know, help the patient right. become less agitated and, and more calm. Do you then receive feedback from the patient's families? 
Often, yeah. often I do. Yeah, they uh, they say that it's it's wonderful to be able to see their loved ones being able to relax because so much if they know they're uncomfortable, the family feels uncomfortable. Most of the time, is the family present when you have a session? Usually, it, yeah, one or two people are present. Also, sometimes the nurse is present. And I had an experience once with the nurse who was doing the vital signs on a patient, and I was playing the harp. And she said, all of a sudden, she said, do you know that uh, it was much easier today to take the vital signs uh, because the patient wasn't agitated or yeah. wasn't They're moving away or anything. The patient was more relaxed so that the whole process of taking the vital signs uh, took a lot less time. Yeah. And it was, it was much better. Yeah. So that was uh, an observation from another health professional, yeah, right, which, right. which is great. Um, sometimes when, I, when a patient is really struggling to breathe, I might match the breathing pattern with the harp, with the tempo, and then become slower and calmer. And actually a patient, a member of the f uh, family said to me, you know, I saw his breathing change. I really, really, I really saw it was yeah. from a labored breathing to a more relaxed breathing as soon as you started to play. And I said, wow, that, that says it all, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's really, really neat. So if you look at different uses within hospice, it would be um, some of the symptom management. Yes. At yes. first. Absolutely, because that's what the, the nurses and the social workers are trying to work in medically to control those kinds of symptoms right. that, that show up in the diagnosis. So that would be um, whether it's the agitation mm -hmm. or the restlessness. Yeah, hallucinations. Oh, hallucinations, okay. Cardiac heart failure, you know, a person ah. needs stress reduction, anybody okay. that's in cardiac heart failure. Um, people that may have anxiety about their diagnosis, not being able to cope with the diagnosis of cancer, not being able to cope with uh, things that might happen to them, anticipatory grief. Right. Yeah. Ah. So it's wow. Yeah. It's Do you lot. have a typical um, how many sessions you are able to get in before? Um, like I say, it's yeah, very uh, unpredictable yeah. because someone can go on hospice and look quite well, and in, in two weeks they've, they've died. Yeah. Um, other people look like they're not going to last very long, but they might be alive for, you know, they may ha I may be able to see them for six or seven sessions. Right. Um, I try, because I'm only one person, uh, I try to see whoever I can once a week. If, I, if they're on my caseload. And if I can't see them once a week, then uh, those who are doing a little better can probably uh, work with me once a month or something like oh, that. Okay. But we're always hoping to find um, more people that we will be able to service. Uh, yeah. Because it, it does like a, help. It, it does really help, does. Yeah. 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 And you have not just um, sort of this qualitative evidence you actually there's actually numbers out there for example with the nurse doing the absolutely there's vitals numbers. at the same time I have a quote from a, an MD there's several doctors who are in the field now and um, you know we, we think of music therapy as a complementary type of okay. uh, service and uh, this is a quote from Dr. Raymond Baer he says without a doubt music therapy ranks high on the list of modern day management of critical care patients its relaxing properties enable patients to get well faster by allowing them to accept their condition and their treatment without excessive anxiety. And uh, he also says that half hour of listening to live music produces the same effect as 10 milligrams of, mil of Valium. Really? And Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, he says, also an, a medical doctor, I'm all in favor of implementing as wide as possible a spectrum of complementary healing modalities for outpatient as well as in-hospital treatments. Wow. Um, Dr. Gaynor's written the, the book, The Healing Power of Sound. Okay. And he said he believes that it should be every hospital's mandated responsibility to offer music therapy for its proven anti-anxiety effects as well as other benefits. Nice. How about so that? So you have the backing of the medical community, which <laughs> always helps. On the East Coast, we also have the backing of Dr. Oliver Sacks. 
Ah, okay. um, he did a lot of work with neurological rehabilitation and okay. music therapy. He is also uh, was a patient in a hospital that his, uh, had a broken ankle from hiking and uh, all the medical things he done w were done properly, like the surgery went well, mm -hmm. his um, physical therapy went well, his physiatry went well, but he still couldn't walk on the, on the foot it didn't give his brain a connection that right. he was walking on a, a hard surface. So after listening to one of, uh, he, he loves music, he was listening to a violin concerto, a Mendelssohn violin concerto, and something sparked electrically in his leg. And he was able to begin the rehabilitation process of the nerves and muscles were working. He is a fine advocate of music therapy. Yes, I would say. <laughs> and his his biography is called A Leg to Stand On. Oh, and perfect. And he's written it, and it's out there. It's probably out of print now, but it's still a wonderful book. Yes, and, uh, yeah. So you will see lots of music therapy uh, out there on books and journals and magazines and newspapers. Yes. Because it's in the limelight right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people are realizing more and more that music therapy is helpful. Yeah. yeah. Why, what do you get out of it? I get the satisfaction of knowing that um, music therapy works and it's challenging for me because every patient's different. Every, everyone is different. Um, there's no set pattern, there's no set prescription that you really, I have to meet the patient where they're at and mm -hmm. all of their life experiences and all of whoever they are come to the session. So I have to be able to meet that and say, what works for one person may not work for another. Right. So that's, that's the, challenge. the challenge. Every day is a really a new adventure. Well, plus you get the I, music too at the same I time. Get, I get to play nice. the music you and get I to get play to the hear music. it. <laughs> and live is so much better. I know that was one of the questions, especially yeah. in hospice. Oftentimes music will be played sort of constantly mm -hmm. to help calm the patient, but it's a CD, so mm -hmm. the value of live music versus a recording. And if it's played constantly, it becomes like music. It, oh, yeah. it, it becomes in the background, background a lot. But if it's played at specific times for the patient, that's more therapeutic. But if it's played with live music, it's even more therapeutic and more, and more calming, that's for sure. You can just feel the vibration. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have certain, um, you know, before you had uh, some a song that someone might know the lyrics to that could mm -hmm. provide stress if they weren't prepared for that or they were having trouble pulling out the lyrics, and then there's music that is no lyrics. Do you have a set sort of set of yeah, do. music that you play? A lot of the music comes out of um, California. There's a music therapist there, Christina Turin, who has written a lot of uh, music for hospice and palliative care. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Just for hospice. Uh, she also teaches a lot of medieval music, music uh, of the early church that was, um, even before the church, music of the early Greeks and the modes. Wow. Because the ancient physicians, Pythagoras, Aristotle, Plato, they, they were all healers and used music. Really? The, an the ancient physicians were actually all musicians, and they had healing Fascinating. vibrations. They had energy medicine way before we do now, and it's certainly not. What new, happened? It's not new age, <laughs> but we've yeah. um, we dropped a lot of that. You know, we used to, Pythagoras was the father of, of sound, and uh, the tuning of an instrument is Pythagorean. Right. So it's it's like. It's, it's, we're, we're catching up again. We're, we're, yes. we're going back and we're integrating and we're saying, this can work. Right. And, and it can help a lot of people. Yeah. Which is great. And you are finding that, definitely. Yes, we are yes. finding that. Yes. We're going to bring more of it out to the East, definitely. Yes. Do you find, do you see it more? Are you a unique individual? Yes, I'm definitely unique. <laughs> um, like I said, I, I've had to, I've traveled internationally. Okay. in music therapy fields. Um, Europe is definitely ahead of us in music and medicine. Yes. Uh, this country, it's beginning to take off, but the, uh, the California 
the West definitely has a lot of innovative techniques that uh, they're out there and just need to be carried carried out east. So right. I am a pioneer. Aren't you good? Yeah. Music therapy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. For, because it, you know, it definitely works. It's just that because it's new, because it's new to the accepted modalities, mm -hmm. people are a little leery of embracing it. Yeah. And I think once people are educated more about uh, how music therapy works, yes. that um, they will be more open to it. And so it's a little, I mean, why not try it? Yeah, right. Why it's not try no it? Harm no foul, kind of. Right. It's not like a Absolutely. new med that could have a reaction. You've, right. Have you ever had a negative reaction? No, I haven't. No, I can't I imagine. Haven't. Yeah. Um, so that's that's amazing too. Yes. I, I've never been thrown out of anybody's no, room. No, I can't. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been asked. I've always been invited back. Oh yeah. So that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Um, believe it or not, we only have about a minute left. Oh my. So I just wanted to be sure, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want viewers to know about music um, therapy in the bigger sense or even in your own personal practice? And we went over some symptoms that were very important. Right. Uh, that it's for symptom management as well as end of life Absolutely. Moments, and that's also, where the, some of the... The interesting thing, too, is that um, this past year, we've incorporated um, harp music into our memorial service. Oh, nice. So that um, we will be doing memorial services November 1st and 2nd uh, of this year. And it also will incorporate two harpists into the service, and all the chaplains will be there, and the social workers. and all all families who have been um, have lost a loved one during this year yes. will be invited to the program and it's, it's really a wonderful comforting yeah. experience yeah well you do wonderful work thank you so much for being here and You're sharing welcome. thank that you for having information. me i appreciate it yeah pleasure so i'm jean sarnowski wishing you good health and good health care <laughs>